All right, Dylan Groenewegen, I am um, in my prediction, I thought he was going to do well, and I thought he was going to do well due to his leadouts, but he has done well despite his leadouts being absolutely dreadful. So only one kilometer to go, this is sort of a downhill finish, uh, a downhill straight into an uphill finish. So very hard to time, a 4% for the last 600 meters, and so the speeds were quite low up there in comparison to a normal sprint. So anyway, on this part, 77k an hour, you can see no one's taking control, everyone's just spinning their 5311, I don't think anyone really... Um, could lead this out properly. You can see here it's pretty bunched up. There are a lot of people are freewheeling in the main peloton just around where my mouse is here. FTJ have taken it up now, but they're not really stringing it out enough. You can see here there's far too many people massed across the road for this to be full gas lead out. You can see we've got the Quick Step boys on the right here. We've got Sagan there. Uh, we've got Dylan Gronewegen is just Sorry, that little bloke with his helmet there. Uh, and then we have uh, Christophe Lepore there. Uh, Cavendish is somewhere to be seen. I think he might. He's sort of hidden there. I think he's that white helmet just behind the UAE rider. Uh, but yeah, so you can see here FTJ are leading it out, but not very hard. You can then see on the right-hand side of the road, we've now got um, Gaviria. Gaviria's lead out man, Riquezo, is about a launch. We've got Sunweb on the left, and we have Dylan Gronewegen just here. Uh, Sagan is there. We also have Kristoff as well involved. So you can see that in reality, most people are pretty well positioned all around Gaviria's wheel. That is the wheel you want to be on. So at 63 k's an hour, going uphill, this is quite slow for a lead out, to be honest. Um, and it just keeps getting slower because it's just steep and steeper. So now Riquezo is really going for it. And you can see the speed just keeps decreasing, which means really you've got to be quite far back. So again, you can see Cavendish is here, Demar. We've got one to group go back. I believe it's Dion Smith. Uh, Laporte, we've got Denkolt, we've got Kristoff. So the reality, it's going to be a drag race between these four and Cav if he had some form. So again, speed starts to decrease, goes across on the other side of the road. The sprint is going to open up on the right-hand side of the road. You can see it's pretty close to on, on the barriers. So it's going to open up on the right-hand side of the road. Uh, and we can see Pedro Sagan is looking in good form at this moment. Cav starts to go here. It looks like he's getting in excited, um, but he has no form, unfortunately. And you can't see Dylan Gronewegen, but he's getting absolutely incredible draft behind Kristoff. So Gronewegen just plays it late. Now here, both of them launch at the same time. Gaviria launches 267 meters to go, which for me is too far to go um, on this uphill finish. Uh, about the similar distance on a flat would be fine, but uphill they're only going 50 k's an hour, which for a sprint finish for the World Tour guys is very, very slow. They normally hit 70 k's an hour in that. You can then see we have Dylan Groenewegen who's getting a decent draft and goes about the same time as Gaviria, but has a better draft and is just way stronger. So he's getting a bit of a draft, Groenewegen, and Sagan is just sort of lost here, and everyone else is just crying at the back and that literally nowhere near. So just watch the launch that Dylan Groenewegen has. He manages to, he starts a little bit back, further back than Gaviria, and then comes around here and just absolutely dominates him. He was just so much stronger than Gaviria. Like, he just goes ahead of him. Like, it's not even that, uh, cl like, close. He just destroys. Watch that again. But Groenewegen literally... But when he launches here, they're side by side here, and just look at the distance he puts. He just goes completely round him. It's not like they're side by side. He literally puts a full bike length into it, and Gaviria is just crying, and there's just no chance he can do that. Groenewegen, if he gets his positioning right, um, he really can win these uphill sprints really easily. And again, the flats as well. He's just, he is one of the best sprinters around, for sure. It's just his lead out is nowhere near as good as Gaviria's. I think between them two, they really are a step above pretty much everyone else at this Tour de France, in my opinion. Um, Sagan's obviously good and other people, but when it comes to a proper sprint, I feel like them two really are a step ahead of everyone else, including Kayla Buen, who's not even here. Um, Cav looks dead, to be honest. Anyway, 1.1 kilometers to go. This is now a very interesting lead out uh, because we have Lotto Sadal finally decide that it's time to get in on the action. So Greipel was looking a little bit more excited. We then have FDJ here. Uh, there's a bit of head butting, as you'll see here, between, yeah. So if you think here, normally the person, actually, we'll just go back like half a second, actually. Um, normally, if the person's shoulders are ahead, they're going to win. So here you think if Greipel just accelerates a bit more, his shoulders will then go ahead of um, Nicky Azan and he'll be able to shoulder him off. But instead, it actually happens the other way. Greipel now realizes that he's lost because here his shoulders are ahead, so he can, he'll be able to control him. So if, if uh, Nicky Azan just pushes him a little bit, Greipel will fall out the wheel. So now this is why the headbutt comes out. But to be honest, Nicky Azan doesn't really doesn't really do much, he just sort of chills there. But anyway, again, you can see lead out is not mega fast, it's single file here, but you can see it's starting to bunch up here, which always means it's not, it's not going full, full gas. Uh, we got quick step with our mini lead out here. 
uh, and they're playing it sort of late-ish. Maybe they were a bit worried last time because they let up too early and they're worried about Dylan Groenewegen, who's sitting here. Uh, and then we have Pettis again here as well and John Dagenkolb. Cavs here, but we all know about Cav and Soren Kragerson is here trying to help Nicky Sant for a lead out as Michael Matthews has gone home. So again, we'll just we'll just keep watching, keep watching, keep watching. We got a bit of one to group go bear lead out on the left hand side here. This uh, Lotto Sudal rider comes off, and then FDJ man just doesn't drill it. He just rides like same same speed. Like normally they they really just not up it like a huge amount, but just slowly bring that speed up. But he's not. He's just like meddling around, and then you'll see here that suddenly it's like I mean they're still doing sixty k's now. Like they're not <laughs> they're not noodling. But you can see here suddenly it's like. Two abreast, you've got um, Soren Kragerson trying to help, and we've got Andre Greipel here, uh, and then we can't really see too much else from this angle, but you could see Dylan Groenewegen's helmet. So again, this is some jogging camera footage, but here we go, right. So we've got Riquezza goes on the right-hand side of the road here. Gaviria's like, nah, it's all right. I don't, I'm not going to trust him. I want to I stalk some other people. We now have um, Demar here, who's just realized that he's on the front at 400 meters to go, and he's going to get swamped, so he basically just gives up. Denkolb is here, and then we have... Direct Energy, Thomas Boudard there. We've got Sagan's helmet here, and we have Dylan Groenewegen here. He's in a perfect position yet again. Um, so we'll just keep watching. Kittle's like all the way back here, just dying. Um, so at this moment in time, it's looking not good for uh, Demar. Uh, and the speed you can see is dropped by like 5k an hour, just because at this speed, if you like just don't spell up the same like speed, you you just the wind resistance is so high that you decelerate massively. So suddenly it means that on the left-hand side of the road here, everyone else is decelerating on this side, on the left-hand side here, as we look at it, suddenly these people are carrying a lot more speed. Um, and Gavira decides that he's going to go, and there's basically a gap that he managed to nab through here, which is pretty good. But you can see here, Sagan now, now decides it's time to go on the right-hand side. Um, and then you'll see Nikias on and Greipel start to move up. All right, so Gavira goes down this small gap here, which to be honest, like if he had the legs, he would have made it. But I don't think he had the legs today because on this part here, he could have made it past Sagan if he was really going for it. Greipel then decides that, you know what, I'm going to follow Sagan's wheel as well and just pushes him off. The camera angle then disappears and shows all the lead out riders over here who are slightly irrelevant. But you can see here, there's now massive, a massive sort of log jam. Sagan's not going fast enough to win. Gaviria and Greipel are both here and Groenewegen's about to launch. Greipel then decides, this is literally the third time he's like fucked up the sprint. He then decides that it's better to go on the other side of the road. So now it swings out massively as he realizes that Sagan is, he needs to get past Sagan. So then he swings out here, forces Groenewegen to swing out. And this is the first time Groenewegen hits the win. So we watch it again here. Groenewegen's all drafting, drafting Greipel, drafting Greipel, saving energy, saving energy. Still here, like even though he's not necessarily straight behind him, he's still getting good as drop. And then here Greipel goes around him and then Groenewegen just absolutely destroys everyone at the very end. He's managed to save a lot of energy um, because he just went late. So there we go, Groenewegen's last two stage wins. I think he's gonna be on great form. The next couple sprints, I definitely expect him to do well. Kittle and Cav, completely dead on this tour. Um, Kittle, I literally haven't seen sprint pretty much. Um, Cav's been in good position. His lead out's been absolutely shocking. Like the lead outs so far this Tour de France, um, they've been good the first couple with um, Gaviria. And then recently they've been so sloppy. No one's taken control. I think maybe it's the smaller teams, I don't know, but Cav, his lead out's just not there, um, and if he has a good lead out, you know he's going to be on good form. But he's still a good position. I feel like if he had the legs, he'd be able to get up there and compete. But alas, the man is not. So anyway, cheers for watching. Hope you enjoyed this um, footage. I've got some more Giro Rosa content coming up. They climbed the Montezon Clan, which is pretty epic. So I'll do some analysis on that. But anyway, cheers for watching, and I'll see you in the next vid.